Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you all my YouTube family for uh, helping me to reach 1K subscribers. So love you all and thank you so much. So let's see the disorders of endocrine system in the pituitary disorders. So before going to the pituitary disorders, let us see about the pituitary gland. So it is a master gland of the body and it is a pea-sized organ which is located below the hypothalamus and it does many vital functions of the body and also it helps in producing so many hormones which has different functions. So coming to the anterior pituitary gland secreting hormones, so first is growth hormone which regulates the growth, metabolism and body composition. Adrenocorticotropic hormone, this stimulates the adrenal gland to secrete steroid hormones which are responsible for maintaining glucose and electrolyte balance. And gondotrophins, so these are glutenizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. These are sex hormones which are responsible for maturation of the ovum and sperm. And prolactin helps in milk production after birth. And thyroid stimulating hormone will stimulate the thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormones which are responsible for maintaining the basal metabolism of the body. And coming to the posterior pituitary gland, they secrete two hormones, antidiuretic and oxytocin. Antidiuretic is also called vasopressin. It is responsible for maintaining the water pressure balance and blood pressure. And oxytocin helps in uterine contraction during labor and also helps in secretion of milk by the mother after delivery. Coming to anterior pituitary gland disorders, there are two, two disorders mainly. One is hyperpituitarism. So as the name hyper, it's, there is overproduction of the pituitary hormones due to overactive pituitary gland which can be caused due to some benign tumor of the pituitaries because this tumor's tissue also produces more hormones. And the other one is the hypopituitarism, so which means decreased secretion of the pituitary hormones and in this it can be divided into two as selective hypopituitarism where there is only deficiency of one pituitary hormone Whereas pan hypopituitarism is a total failure of the pituitary gland where there is deficiency of all the pituitary hormones. Coming to the etiology, so in hypopituitarism it can be due to a primary pituitary tumor. So that means tumors in the pituitary gland which is can be a prolactinoma, corticotropinoma or somatotropinoma. So in these conditions the tumor cells also produce more hormones which can result in hyperpituitarism and primary endocrine organ deficiency so that is when the organs are not able to release the hormones okay for example if there is a thyroid disorder where the thyroid gland has gone for inflammation like thyroiditis or hypothyroidism the thyroid gland is not able to release the hormones but when the level of the thyroid hormones are less in the blood the pituitary will keep on stimulating the hormone in order to induce the secretion by the target glands but if the thyroid gland is not able to secrete the hormones due to disease and the pituitary is keeping on stimulating more and more hormones then there will be increased secretion of pituitary hormones which is called hyperpituitarism and next is neuroendocrine or ectopic tumors so this is when the tumor is not on the pituitary gland but some other organ if the tumor is there there can be a secondary tumor that means the tumor can uh, spread to the pituitaries and it can also cause increased secretion of the pituitary hormones which can result in hyperpituitarism. So coming to etiology of hypopituitarism so this can be due to damage to the pituitary gland which can occur because of a head injury or a brain surgery or a head and neck radiation. So in these conditions there can be damage and which can result in decreased secretion of pituitary hormones and lack of blood flow which will cause infarction of the pituitary gland this can occur due to stroke and hemorrhage and certain medications like narcotics, hydrocorticosteroids and anti-cancer drugs so these can suppress the production of pituitary hormones and autoimmune disease like hypophysitis so here the body's immune system itself will destroy the pituitary gland where the pituitary will not be able to secrete hormones and infectious diseases like meningitis, encephalitis and other infections that which of outside the brain they can also cross the brain and enter the pituitaries and when the infection causes infection of the pituitary gland then the pituitary gland will not secrete adequate hormones and infiltrated diseases like sarcoidosis, histiocytosis so in these diseases there will be scarring of the tissues so when the pituitary gland is gone, gone for scarring it will not stimulate the production of hormones which can result in hypopituitarism 
and sehen syndrome so this is a condition occurs for the mother after delivery due to loss of excess blood during delivery then the pituitary gland will not get adequate blood supply where the pituitary will go for necrosis necrosis is death which can result in postpartum pituitary necrosis again in these condition patient will go for hypopituitarism and genetic mutations of the pituitary gland so this is during uh, gene in the chromosome itself there is some abnormality where the pituitary is not able to produce one or more hormones that is so these all conditions can result in hypopituitarism coming to the pathophysiology so in hyperpituitarism it can be a tumor so tumor is an adenoma which can be a inherited or it can be a direct pituitary tumor so when, when there is a tumor the tumor cells also starts to produce more and more hormones so there is over production of pituitary hormones so when there is excessive secretion of the growth hormone it will result in unwanted longitudinal growth and the long bones will grow in length and also they grow in width okay that means thickness also will increase which can result in gigantism in children and acromegaly in adults so here you can see abnormal uh, increased body appearance with uh, with all the tissues are very uh, enlarged okay or very large tissue you can see that is called gigantism and acromegaly and increased gh that is growth hormone will also release excess blood glucose and insulin antagonism that means insulin cannot Uh, suppress all this glucose so that the person will predispose to diabetes mellitus because of increased glucose in the blood and in hypopituitarism so this can be any lesions or infection or any infarction or autoimmune disorder where the pituitary is getting diseased or it is uh, disordered so there is hypofunctioning of the pituitary gland pituitary gland is not functioning properly so there is decreased or deficient secretion of pituitary hormone so this deficient secretion can occur in one one hormone or all the hormones will be deficient in secretion so if the growth hormone is deficient then person will go for dwarfism where the person body will be very short and if it is acth that is adrenocortic tropic hormone deficiency then the person will go for adrenal shock and electrolyte imbalances and deficiency in gonadotropins will result in infertility because the ovarian sperm will not mature and deficiency in thyroid hormones can result in life threatening complications okay and next coming to the signs and symptoms so in hyperpituitarism there will be gigantism in children so that is excessive longitudinal growth of bones acromegaly in adults so over growth of bones and tissues enlargements of hand and feet fingertips develops and tufted and club like experience okay everything will be very club and uh, very big big in shape and enlargements of bone and cartilage will cause joint pains and deforming and crippling arthritis okay because there will be excess growth and um, the if <coughs> the epiphysis or the ends of the bone will close okay so at that time they will abnormally enlarge outside so there will be a deformity and changes in the facial appearance and uh, and because of thickening and enlargement in the bones and tissues of the face and mandible will jut forward okay so because of the enlargement they will come out and paranasal and frontal sinuses will enlarge and enlargement of bones in eyes nose mouth will be enlarged and you can see some coarse facial that means very big facial features will be there and tongue will be enlarged so that patient cannot speech pro- speak properly and voice will become very coarse because of hypertrophy or the enlargement of the vocal cords and patient will have sleep apnea because all the pharyngeal tissue and tissues around the throat are enlarged because of that airway obstruction will be there and skin will become thick lethargy and oily so this is due to increased hormone and menstrual irregularities will be there in women and pituitary tumor can compress the nearby nerves etc which can cause headache visual disturbances and muscle weakness and whenever there is increased growth hormone secretion there will be increased fat metabolize mobilization to the blood so that means from the tissues fat will go to the blood and they can deposit in the blood vessels which can cause atherosclerotic changes in the blood and patients uh, will with the increased growth hormone they will have increased blood glucose 
because anti insulin can will not be produced in a uh, excess amount in order to uh, control all the glucose which can result in diabetes melt okay in hypopituitarism the signs and symptoms are when there is growth hormone deficiency a person will have dwarfism so that means short stature and uh, trunkal obesity is obese abdomen and decreased muscle mass decreased strength decreased energy and decreased exercise tolerance will be there and when there is follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone deficiency then person will have menstrual irregularities decreased sexual desire breast size will be decreased in women and the male will have impotence and decreased facial hair and decreased muscle mass and when there is adrenocorticotropic hormone deficiency patient will show weakness fatigue dry and pale skin diminished axillary and pubic hair postural hypotension which means decreased bp decreased sugar and decreased immune response will be there and when there is thyroid hormone deficiency patient will have cold intolerance because of decreased bmr and constipation lethargy and weight gain and when there is lesions in the pituitary gland then it can cause headache and visual changes and anosmia is loss of smell and seizures and next coming to the diagnostic studies so in hyperpituitarism we have to do a oral glucose tolerance test so in that when patient when we do a oral glucose intolerance test and we check the growth hormone levels in the blood it will not fall below the 1 nanogram per ml so when it is not going less than 1 nanogram per ml then it is positive for hyperpituitarism and in blood test we have to see the plasma levels of insulin like growth factor level will be increased and insulin like growth factor binding protein levels will fluctuate it may remain constant and sometimes it may change and imaging studies ct scan and mri will be done in order to see the tumor its size severity etc and because in hyperpituitarism the tumor can compress the nerves of the eye and it can cause visual changes so you have to tell the person to go for an ophthalmic examination to see visual changes and compression of optic nerve and hormonal assays like uh, growth hormone thyroid stimulating hormone follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone acth adrenocorticotropic hormone so these all hormone levels will be increased in hyperpituitarism and in hypopituitarism you have to check the history and physical examination to identify which hormone is deficient and hormonal assays same way all the growth hormone thyroid stimulating hormone follicle stimulating luteinizing and adrenocorticotropic hormone levels will be checked and these will be decreased in blood next is stimulation and dynamic functions test so you have to stimulate the hormonal axis and observe for the hormonal response and uh, hormonal deficiency will be there in stimulation test again in ct scan mri you have to do for any lesions in the brain and pituitary gland and coming to the management so first is pharmacological therapy so in hyperpituitarism we have to administer somatostatin analog so it comes as octreotide and landreotide which helps in reducing the growth hormone level and growth hormone receptor antagonist which is pegbisomant which will block the action of growth hormone and dopamine agonist which is gabagolin it will suppress the growth hormone secretion and recombinant growth hormone factor so here we will administer somatotrophin so it is a long term replacement therapy so this is done mainly when patient has undergone a surgery or radiation therapy where the pituitary gland is removed and because of the pituitary will not be able to secrete the hormone so we have to Uh, as a replacement therapy we have to administer this recombinant growth hormone factor in hypopituitarism we give growth hormone somatotrophin it comes as genotrophin and humotrop so this is replacement therapy for growth hormone so it helps in increasing the growth hormone levels and corticosteroids so here we give hydrocortisone or prednisone so it helps in to replace the adrenal hormone and levothyroxine so levoxyl and synthyroid are given to treat low thyroid hormones in case of thyroid stimulating hormone deficiency and sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone is replaced for uh, hyperfunction of pituitary in women and testosterone is given for men for gonadotropin deficiency and in surgical management so this is done only for hyperpituitarism the hypophysectomy so that is removal of the pituitary gland so when there is a 
cancerous or benign tumors then it can be removed so when we do a open hypophysectomy it will remove the whole pituitary gland where there won't be secretion of pituitary hormones and the other minor way is the transphenoidal hypophysectomy so it is done through the mouth okay so they make make an incision in the upper lip and the gingiva and through an endoscope they reach the cella toxica so where the pituitary gland is there so in that they reach and they will only uh, remove the pituitary gland so that only the growth hormone secretion will be decreased other hormones will be preserved so in radiation therapy there is external radiation therapy so external radiation ther therapy is on the whole the pituitary gland is exposed to the uh, radiation from the top so here the radiation is done for a long duration like uh, five times a week over a month it has to be done in order to suppress the pituitary gland and here the problem is it can not only damage the pituitary gland even our surrounding brain tissue also can be damaged in external radiation therapy so the other focused form of radiation surgery therapy is stereotactic radio surgery so here they use a gamma surgery photon beam and a linear accelerator to surgically access the pituitary tumors and only the blood vessels which are supplying the uh, tumor tissue will be occluded so that the tumor tissue will die without the blood supply and finally coming to nursing management so you have to monitor vital signs neurological status fluid volume status weight monitoring will be done and hormonal assays we have to do that means levels of hormones you have to check to identify hyper or hyper functioning of the pituitary gland and uh, if there is hyper functioning and also after surgery the patient may need lifelong hormone replacement therapy so that has to be educated and in case patient is having headaches mild sali mild analgesics like salicylates can be given and after surgery you have to tell the patient to avoid vigorous coughing sneezing and straining while salva manual this all to prevent the leakage of cerebrospinal fluid after surgery and in case of transphenoidal approach you have to advise the person not to brush the teeth for 2 weeks because the suture will be on the gingiva and it can disrupt the sutures and iv antibiotics should be administered for surgical clients and care of surgical clients like suture care pinside care everything has to be done at the hospital and in while discharge we have, we have we should also demonstrate the procedure to the family members so that they can care at home and psychological support should be provided to promote positive mental health and also all the uh, teaching regarding medications and also self administration of insulin and growth hormone injections so these are all subcutaneous injections which the patient can administer by self so this has to be taught to the person so thank you for listening i hope you have understood my class please like share subscribe and click the notification button and again a big thank you for all my subscribers for helping me to reach 1000